Welcome back everybody to the second set of multiple choice questions. Let's get started. So first question here, a simple pendulum has a period of T on Earth. What is the period T prime of the same pendulum on the moon where the acceleration due to gravity is one sixth that of the Earth? Okay, so first we have to know the formula for a pendulum or the period of a pendulum I should say, which is gonna be equal to two pi square root of L, the length of the string, times gravity. So we want to know, as this gravity changes, how is this period going to change? Okay, so what we should know is, if this gravity changes by a factor of 1 6, that means this side of the equation is going to change by a factor of square root of 6 over 1. Since six, 1 over 6 is in the denominator, that flips to 1 over 6. So that means this period here has to change to a factor of 6. So which one is that going to be? That's going to be C. Okay, And that should make more sense. If there's not as much gravity, it's going to take longer for it to swing back and forth. Okay. Alright, let's look at this. A mass of 0 0.5 kilograms is hung from two identical springs. The mass causes each spring to stretch 0 0.1 meters. What is the approximate spring constant of each spring? Okay, so we want to know what this k is equal to uh, and what this k is equal to. We know that they're both the same, but we want to know what these are equal to. Um, so what we should know is once this is put on, it gets stretched 0 0.1 meters. Meaning at this point, the force of gravity is equal to the force of the springs. Okay, they're in equilibrium. Uh, and I'm just going to find what the total force of the spring is. So I'm going to say force of the spring total is equal to the force of gravity. So this is going to be kx is equal to mg. k is unknown. That's what we're looking for. x, it gets stretched 0.1 meters. The mass is 0.5. And then gravity is 10. Do a little bit of algebra. And then we find that k is... 5 divided by 0 0.1, which is 50 newton per meter. However, this is the total, okay? This is for the combined force of the spring, and they're in parallel. So what that means is this is going to be 25, and this is going to be 25, because in parallel, you add them together, and that's up to 50. So this should be uh, 25, which is C. Okay, let's look at the next one. A pendulum-driven clock located on the Earth is set into motion by releasing its 10-meter long simple pendulum for a maximum angle of less than 10 degrees to the vertical. At what approximate time will the pendulum have fallen to a perfectly vertical orientation? Okay, so what's happening here is we have a pendulum like this. It's at some angle, okay, some small angle. And then it's going to go back and forth like this. And we want to know how long it's going to take for the pendulum to go from here to here. But before we do that, let's try to figure out what the period is. So we know the period of a pendulum is equal to 2 pi times uh, square root of the mass, oh, not the mass, uh, of the length, which is 10, uh, divided by gravity, which is also 10. So I can see that the period is equal to 2 pi, okay? But remember, what that means is, that's how long it takes to go from here to the equilibrium, all the way to the other side, back to the equilibrium, back to where it started. So that's how long it takes, 2 pi seconds to, uh, to go to make a full cycle. We just want to know how long it takes to go to this point right here, which is 1 fourth of the period. So we could do 2 pi, divide that by 4, and that's going to be pi over 2 seconds. Okay, let's move on to the next one. A light spring with a spring constant of 10 newton per meter is attached to a mass. The mass is pulled down and released and exhibits simple harmonic motion with a period of 0.2 pi. The mass is blank. Okay. So again, uh, we know that period is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k, and this is a period of a spring. We know the period is equal to z.2 pi. It's going to be equal to 2 pi square root of mass, which we don't know. That's what we're looking for. And square root of k, which is 10. OK, 
Okay, first thing right off the bat, the pi cancels out. Uh, two div uh, point two divided by two, and we get zero point one. So zero point one is equal to square root of m over ten. Square that, and multiply by ten, and we get zero point one kilograms. Okay, moving on. Uh, last one here. An ideal spring is attached to support. Uh, to a support and pull the distance a in the negative y direction at time t equals zero as shown. Okay, the mass oscillates with the period t, which given sh uh, shows the correlation position versus time and the velocity versus time graph. Okay, so we know at time t equals zero, it starts here and then it's going to oscillate back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So we have position versus time and velocity versus time uh, for every situation. Let's just first look at the position versus time. So we know it starts at negative a. What that means is uh, a is a possibility, b is a possibility, and d is a possibility. c and e is not a possibility because c starts at positive a, and e also starts at positive a. Okay, a, b, and d all start at negative a, so that's good. Okay, so either one of these can, is correct for the position versus time. But now let's look at the velocity versus time. So we should know when it's all the way at the end like this, the velocity starts at zero. So it's going to start at zero and it's going to start to speed up. So nope, that's not for A. This is, has a negative velocity at the very beginning. Not B, this has a positive velocity at the very beginning. But it's going to be D. D starts with zero velocity. It goes up, it's going fast, and then it's going to slow to a stop, and then it's going to go in the other way. So D is the correct answer. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, for, the last, for the next one, we're going to be doing advanced problems. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you with the next one.